Gimel continues the Gemara's discussion of the rule that somebody who brings a get, a bill of divorce, from outside Eretz Yisrael, either to within Eretz Yisrael or somewhere else in Chutz Laretz, he needs to say, We had said there was a machlokas between Rabbah and Rabbah, what the reason is. The Gemara has analyzed the opinion of Rabbah, of Rabbah, of Rabbah. Now the Gemara is analyzing the opinion of Rabbah, and then the Gemara is going to compare the two and discuss why they don't say like each other and start bringing proofs to figure out the machlokas. So Rabbah said the reason is because we're afraid that the husband will come and complain, and he will try to invalidate the get by saying that it was forged. And if you're coming from far away, then you're not going to have witnesses around to verify the validity of the signatures. You won't be able to find the signatories themselves because they won't be here. And you won't be able to find people who recognize the signatures and are able to testify that they aren't forged. So the Gemara's question is, according to Rava, if that's a concern, you should need to have two witnesses. Why is it enough to have the shliach, the messenger who's bringing the ad, for him to say that I saw that it was actually signed by the real people who signed it? You need to have two people, just like every time you need to validate a star, it requires two witnesses to testify to the signature. It's not enough to have just one. So the Gemara answers that this is different. Every other star is talking about the halachas of money. The rules are that for monetary establishing facts, you need to have two witnesses. For Isurin to testify that something is mutter or also, you only have to have one witness. So the Gemara asks, just like we asked before in the opinion of Rabba, that's only true that you need one witness when you have something which is not as chazik yisur, there's no chazik yisur. You're trying to figure out if something mutter or asur, and you have no pre-existing established fact. Like you have a piece of meat, you're not sure if it's chele or shuman, if it's kosher meat or non-kosher meat. You never knew, but it hasn't changed. Whatever it is, it always was. You're just trying to figure out what it is, so there's no chazaka you need to overcome. Here, the woman was definitely married, in which case she was forbidden to everybody else in the world. And now you want to say that she was divorced, you have to overcome the chazkas iser that she was definitely married before. So for that, the rule is, in the Rosh Hashanah, any iser that has to do with Arias is needs requires two witnesses. So how is it enough to have just one? So the Gemara answer is no. Really, every time you want to certify a star, every time you want to prove that the signatures on a document are real and not forged, you only have to have one witness. Uh, and this is based on a statement of Rish Lakish that witnesses that are signed on a document are assumed to be valid because people don't go so far, they may lie, but they're not going to go so far as to forge a signature. And therefore, it, it's rare to find somebody who's willing to do that. So therefore, if you have a signed star, it's most likely assumed to be valid and not forged. So the only reason why you even have to do anything to establish them is because Amir Rabban, Rabban said, hey, let's find somebody to corroborate the signatures. Now here, in a situation where if you can't find someone, it's going to close Laguna, and they say, we're not going to make you have two people to corroborate the signatures, it's enough to have just one, it's enough to have the shleach say, b'fani nechta, b'fani nechta. So I asks, why? Is that helpful? By allowing this one, you have a situation where the husband could come and complain, and he'll say, you say that it's not forged, I said it is forged, it's one against one, and now we don't have anything, we're stuck, and we have to go to and, and and invalidate it. If you would require two, then there would always be two, and then the husband would never come and complain because he would lose. So the Gemara answers, no, we know that the husband's highly unlikely to come and complain anyway, because like we said before, you have to have the shliach give it to the woman in front of either two or three witnesses. We said that's Machag Zviyach and Rebchanina, and therefore we know that we're going to be careful, and the Shlech is going to make sure that the husband really wants to divorce his wife before he agrees to come and bring the Shtar. Therefore, that's unlikely, and we're not concerned about that. We're going to ask, why does each one not say like the other? Why does Rava not want to say like Rabba is the first question. Rabba says it's because we cannot establish that it was Lashma. We have to expect that someone in Chutz Arts does not know that Allah has written Lashma, so the Sheikh has to say, B'fani Nechta, B'fani Nechta. So when it says, Rabba says if it was about Lashma, then he should say, B'fani Nechta, Lashma, B'fani Nechta, Lashma. He doesn't even say the point, he doesn't even say Lashma, so that can't be what it's about. So Mar says, what does Rabba do with that? So Mar explains, Rabba will say that really we want him to say the Shema. The problem is if the speech is too long, he may leave out a word or two. And the rule is if you don't say it exactly the way Chazal said to say it, the whole thing is canceled and it's void. So therefore we didn't want to prescribe they should say Bifani Nechtav Lashma, Bifani Nechtav Lashma. We really do want him to say that. But that can't be what we ordered because then if he doesn't say it right, it's too long. So Mara asks, so the way you said it, he'll also chop off a few words. Mara says, no, two words, Bifani Nechtav. 
or Bifani Nechtam, each of those is considered separate phrases, that you're not going to drop one out of two words. That would be 50% of the whole thing. But to drop one out of three words, you would. And therefore, we only limited it to a two-word speech. So Rashi says, so then how are we going to know it's a Shema? So Rashi said either that we'll ask him. It could be that he'll say it on his own, but if he doesn't, we'll ask him, you saw that it was written, you saw that it was signed, was it written and signed the Shema? So now the Gemara says, now, why does Rabbah not want to say like Rabbah? Why does he not like the explanation that it's because we will not be able to establish the validity of the signatures if they're challenged? So Gemara says, because if that's what it's about, then he should just say, he should just say that he saw that they were signed. What's the point of saying he saw that it was written? What does it have to do with establishing the signatures? So Gemara says, no. Rava will explain to you that really, all we need is for him to say that it was that he saw that it was signed. The reason why we mentioned that it was written is because otherwise people will get confused between establishing the validity of this star and establishing the validity of other stars that concern monetary concerns. Monetary concerns, you have to have two witnesses. Here you only have to have one. People get mixed up and learn from here to monetary contracts that you only need one, that would be a bad thing. Therefore, we say, he also has to say, that it was written and people will see that there's a difference. So when I ask, there's a difference anyway, even without saying funny nachtam, the funny nachtam, it's different. It's different because here he says, B'fani. he doesn't say, I know that it was written, that it was signed by this person. He says, I saw that it was signed. That's a whole different thing. And also here you have a woman is believed. If she was the messenger, you don't have to have a man. So these halachas distinguish it. So where says, the where it doesn't address the woman, part, the solution to that would obviously be if it was a man, then you would still get confused. And even to say that here he's saying Bifana and he's not saying Yodino, he's not saying I know, sometimes he will say Yodino, and if he does say Yodino, he'll accept it. And therefore we could still have confusion, people will learn the wrong halacha from here to regular Shtarais that it's enough to have just one witness. Another aspect that's different here that the Gemara pointed out is here, the person himself who's bringing it is believed. Normally in a contract, the person himself who's bringing it is not believed. The Gemara now begins asking the kashas on the opinions. The first kasha is on Rabba. Rabba says the reason you have to say is to establish that it was written in the Shema. The Gemara's question is, is the tanayim, which part of the get has to be written in the Shema? And no one holds both the get, the writing of the get, and the signature of the get has to be the Shema, and therefore is a problem. Why does he have to say both are the Shema? Then the, the, the two opinions are Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Eliezer, who have a central machlekes that fills the entire masechta, and that is, what is the essence of the get? According to Rabbi Meir, the essence of the get is the signature on the get itself. The document is just a form, it's just a formation, it's a standard form. When the witnesses sign the get, that creates the divorce power that it has. They've signed that this get is a true get, that it's being used, and therefore the signatures are what has to be the shema. The rest of the get, we don't care what it is, it could be a printed form. The signatures is the main thing. And you see this because he says in a mission that if you write a get and the writing is puzzle and the signatures are kosher, it's fine. What's an example of that? So if it's written while it's on something which is attached to the ground, the halachas, that's no good. It doesn't count as writing because you have a drasha that it should not require detachment between the writing and the giving. But nevertheless, if it's written attached to the ground, then it's detached and then it's signed, it's still good because the only thing that's significant is when it was signed. So Rabbi Meir would hold only the signatures have to be lishma, the get itself does not have to be lishma. Now, Rabbi Lee Elazar is the other opinion. He holds that the signatures are irrelevant and you really don't need signatures at all. The giving of the get is what's essential. So you have to write the get. That is the essence of the get. And then you have to give it. And the, you have to have witnesses who see the giving of the get. That's what creates the divorce, the giving. Now, the signatures on it, that's just, just in case you lose the people who saw it. You should at least have a record that it was given properly. And that's what the signatures are for. Now, according to him, you would only have to have the right English on the signatures. You don't need it at all. You don't even have to have the get be signed mid so who then is the opinion has to say that both are lishma? So the Gemara tries to say that it's midrash banan, the other one, and the Gemara tries each way. So the Gemara first says maybe it's Rebbe Lazar. Rebbe Lazar holds that midrash you have to have the get written and the writing has to be lishma. And midrash banan he requires that the signatures be lishma as well. So the Gemara says it's not true. I'll show you Mishnah that Rebbe Lazar holds you don't even have to have signatures even midrash banan. The Gemara quotes that Mishnah says there are three types of gitin that are kosher deraisa and pasul deraisa banan. What are they? They are if it's written in the handwriting of the husband, there's no signatures, the husband's handwriting establishes the validity of it. You can establish it, he wrote it. The second one is if it does not have the date on it, that's a problem meter of banan because you don't know when to collect. 
the ksuba. And the third one is if it has only one signature. Now, these three are, the Mishnah calls them puzzle there, but if they're used, the child is not a mamzer, meaning to say that it's kosher day raisa. So, I mean, and you shouldn't use them. Now, that's Tanakam's opinion there. And Urboza argues and says, even though you don't have signatures on it, but it was given in front of witnesses, it's kosher. And obviously, he means even Midor Bonan. So, you see that because the Tanakam has said, oh, Midor Bonan is possible. He's arguing, he's saying, even Midor Bonan don't have to have it. So, therefore, he's obviously holding that it's kosher, even Midor Bonan. And you cannot tell me that he requires signatures, Midor Bonan. So the Gemara says, okay, so we'll try that to Rabbi Meir. So Rabbi Meir <coughs> holds that you only have to have the signing the Shema, not the writing. It could be he requires writing the Shema, Midir Abbanon. And therefore, our Mishnah says you require the writing and the signing the Shema. We mean on a Dir Abbanon level. So the Gemara says it's not true because Rabbi because Rav Nachman quotes Rabbi Meir, who says even if you find it, get in the garbage, and you take it and you sign it Lishma, that's okay. So you see that L'Chadchila, even Midir Abbanon, you don't require the writing Lishma. So maybe our Mishnah, maybe he was only saying on a Dairaisa level. Maybe really, Durabanan, you have to have both the writing and you need the writing as well as the signing to be the Shema. When Nachman was saying, it's okay if you find it in the garbage, he meant to say that Midirabanon, it's a problem, but Midirais, it's okay if you find it in the garbage. So says, that can't be right either because then he should have to say so. If, halacha, if what he's saying is not Allah Maisa, it's just something that he's saying on a direct level. He shouldn't say, Rabbi Meir used to say, this is the following Allah. It's not true. It's not the Allah. It's only on a direct level that that's true. And therefore, it couldn't be that that's the reality. And therefore, we need to find someone else who is the author of our mission. And that, the Gemara moves on to say, is Rabbi Elozar. Now, Rabbi Elozar, like we said, is a problem because he holds you don't have to have witnesses. So why would he have to say that you have to say, Bifani Nechdam?